Hi and welcome to Gridbusters. The day has finally come when we're going to start building the first battery, the first uh, 15 kilowatt hour battery. Now to do that we use individual battery cells. Uh, we've got 60, uh, yeah, 16 cells uh, in total in multiple boxes here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to unpack the box, uh, the different boxes with all the cells, take a look at them, examine them, uh, and then we're going to hook them up um, and start charging them. That's what we're going to do today. So they come um, pre-packaged four cells at a time in each box. Um, now the great thing is these obviously come from China, but a lot of suppliers now are recognizing that people don't want to wait you know, two or three months to have these things shipped over because they can't be put in an airplane, these cells. Um, so a lot of suppliers now have local warehouses. So in Europe, as an example, this supplier had a, 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 has a warehouse uh, in Poland. So it only actually took three days to get these uh, delivered, which is pretty incredible. They also have warehouses in um, the UK uh, and also in, in America um, and other places around the world. So you can kind of like get them locally, which is really great. And the price I paid included shipping and handling. I didn't have to pay any customs duty, VAT, tax, any of that kind of rubbish. Just the, they quoted me a price and that was what I paid, which was really amazing. Um, I'll include a link to them in the, in the description. So, I'm gonna just um, open up this box and see what we got inside. Hopefully everything's okay. Um, they are pre-packaged in foam, so I'm not worrying about using a knife. Okay. So we've got a little, box here of goodies. I don't know, I think this is probably bus bars. Let's have a look. Yep, so I've got some uh, some bus bars there which we're gonna, gonna use. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is hard, this is packed well. Oh, yes. Right. Oh. Let me just show you using the other camera. So, how exciting. <laughs> so, this is what's inside the box. We've got four individual cells there. Uh, very exciting. Oh. Wow, they're heavy. Okay, so that's the first four. Uh, so, let's have a look. So these are 3.2 volt um, Life PO4 cells. Uh, they're 304 amp hours per cell, uh, 3.2 volts. And each, um, each cell here has 972.8 watt hours. So almost a kilowatt hour per individual cell which is pretty incredible okay so uh, let's uh, let me just gonna get the rest of the cells and let's get all the cells unpacked Ooh. This is too hard unpacking them on the um, shelf because uh, on my counter it's quite high up so trying to pull something that heavy out of something that's really tightly packed into the box so I'm going to unpack them on the floor um, and then lift them up onto the counter. This is too hard unpacking them on the um, shelf because uh, on my counter it's quite high up so trying to pull something that heavy out of something that's really tightly packed into the box so I'm going to unpack them on the floor um, and then lift them up onto the counter.
Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is actually charge these batteries. They come from the factory. Um, well, actually, I have no idea how they come from the factory. I'm assuming they're not fully charged. It would be unlikely that they'd be fully charged. And um, so I will need to fully charge these batteries. Um, I also need to top balance these batteries. This is something you only need to do once uh, before you put them actually in the pack. Um, it, it's, highly, uh, it, it's highly recommended that you top balance these batteries. In fact, the uh, BMS, the battery management system computer, which is going to go into the battery pack in the case, in the, in the manual they recommend that you uh, top balance the batteries before you assemble um, the battery. So that's just going to mean hooking it up to the bench power supply. We made the cables uh, in the last video. Um, we're going to hook that up to uh, this battery. We're going to connect everything up and give it a full charge. Um, and then we're going to make sure everything is top balanced. So what top balancing actually does is it makes sure that every single cell in the pack has the same voltage and also every single cell in the pack has the same charge. So they're all charged to, let's say, 100%. That's really important. What you don't want to do is have different cells at different voltages and different um, capacity. Um, that can really screw up uh, your charging results uh, when you've got the whole pack assembled because if you had, let's say, let's say the whole pack was only at 50% and you would, you know, you decided to charge it and one or two of the cells were at 60%, let's say, so that would be an unbalanced pack. If you then decided to charge um, the, uh, the whole the pack as a whole, the battery management computer, which is you have to have in a, in a battery, it monitors all of the batteries and as soon as any of the cells hit 100%, uh, it shuts off charging to the whole pack. So obviously if you had one or two cells, we're going to connect all of the pluses together, we're going to connect all of the minuses together, and then we've created one massive parallel pack which is still 3.2 volts, but obviously it's 3.2 volts at almost 16 kilowatt hours, so 15.8 kilowatt hours or something like that. So um, I've actually turned the bench power supply off, so let's get this uh, positive cable um, on. Um, I'm just thinking maybe I should put a washer on here. So I've got a little pack of uh, washers and lock nuts and so forth. So oh, let's see if that would work. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, I'll put the official one on here, and then I've got this, uh, let me just get this untangled. And remember I was uh, one short, so luckily I had one in stock. Uh, so uh, I had a spare nut in stock, so uh, I'll put that there. That's the wrong thickness, so let's get one of these. Okay, this one doesn't have a serrated edge, so I'm gonna put down a lock nut there if it will fit. I think that will. I think I'm being a bit overkill but you can never be too careful. And then I've got my spinner here. Okay. Right, so we're now all connected and we're ready to turn on the bench power supply. So, um, 
let me just get this all kind of organized. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the power supply here. So let me just turn that on. Okay, and let's turn on the output. 3.2 volts. Maximum ampage. Okay, so I think that's going. It says zero amps, not quite sure what, why. Maybe that means it's fully charged, not quite sure. Uh, okay, so I set the pen bench power supply to 3.2 uh, volts, um, hooked everything up, switched it on, and getting no current. Um, so there's a couple of things it could be. So first of all, it could be that the battery is already charged. So if there's no amps going through the cable, usually that means that the battery is actually charged. Now, as I said, I don't have the spec sheet for these batteries. I need to get it. And I think um, maybe you need to charge this battery at a slightly higher voltage uh, than 3.2 volts. I don't know, so I need to go and check that out. Um, but it could be that the, the whole, all the cells are actually already charged, which would be fantastic. Um, I've actually also gone through and measured the voltage of every single cell and every single cell is exactly 3.2 volts. There's absolutely no deviation at all. So they're all 3.2 volts exactly. Um, so like I said, I don't know if everything is fully charged already. I'm going to leave this hooked up um, like this overnight because even with no current coming in from the bench power supply, uh, this will still uh, charge, uh, not charge, this will still top balance. So all the current is being distributed between um, all of the cells. Um, so they're kind of like sharing their current. And if I just left it hooked up like this, eventually everything would top balance um, on its own. Although I think everything is pretty much top balance because I took the voltage of each cell and each cell is pretty much um, the same. So like I said, I need to get some advice. I need to read the manual for these particular battery cells. Maybe I need to um, charge them at 3.6 volts. In fact, that's what I did. I, I, I turned the voltage up to 3.6 volts and I started to get current going into the battery. So maybe um, I need to increase the voltage. I just want to be really careful. I don't want to damage these batteries. Um, I'm completely new to this, so I'm not quite sure if that's what you're meant to do or not. Um, so I need to, I'm, I'm, I'm learning um, as well. Um, so maybe I need to push the voltage on this up to 3.6 volts. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe that's, that's what you need to do. Not quite sure, um, I'm learning. So um, I'm gonna go away now and get on my computer and message uh, the company who manufactures these and ask if they have a data sheet. Uh, ask, also ask them what voltage uh, should I be charging uh, these batteries at. Um, okay, so um, I'll catch you tomorrow. Okay, so I'm fast forwarding about a week now and um, I've got the batteries completely charged and completely top balanced. So let me tell you exactly what happened. Well, I discovered that um, to charge these batteries, you actually need to charge them at 3.6 volts. Um, so I changed the charger to 3.6 volts and as soon as I did that, bingo, everything switched on, started getting current through the cables and everything started to charge. Um, now the charger or the bench power supply, I had it set to 20 amps, which is like the maximum current uh, it would throw out. And at 3.6 volts at 20 amps, I worked out that if the batteries were completely 100% flat, it would take about three weeks to charge those batteries um, because it's, you know, it's 15 kilowatt hours of, uh, of, of power. So yeah, three weeks, a long time. Um, so I wasn't sure if this was even going to work uh, or if it is even worth doing. Um, but I just put it on charge. I figured that maybe the batteries are already charged. Maybe they're almost like at 90% you know, charge or 80% charge, something like that. Um, so I just switched everything on. Um, and, you know, a week later, so it's, it's exactly a week later, 
Um, I came in this morning and the charger had actually, the bench power supply, I could see the ampage had slowly started to decline. So what actually happens is, uh, let me just show you a shot of that. Uh, you can see it's, uh, it, it's uh, the ampage isn't at 20 amps anymore. It's, it's at 0 0.2526 like um, amps. So what actually happens is as the charge as the batteries become uh, fully charged, they can accept less and less power into, into them. So the ampage uh, drops on the bench power supply. And as we can see now, it's not at zero, but it's at, you know, it's at zero amps, so it's 0 0.25 amps. Um, and that's you know, dropping and dropping and dropping. So basically what that says is that these batteries can accept no more power now. Uh, so that it's pretty much 100% charged and top balanced. Um, so yeah, so job is done now. So the batteries now are completely top balanced. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, in the next video, I'm going to disassemble um, the batteries which, where I have them um, in parallel and start putting the battery box kit uh, together. Incidentally, I, my plan of action was, you know, if these cells were you know, almost flat, I wasn't going to wait three weeks for them to be charged like this. Um, I've actually ordered all of the rest of the solar equipment. So I've, I've ordered a Victron uh, Quattro um, uh, inverter, which is an inverter and a charger as well. I've also ordered the solar charge controllers. Uh, I've, I've ordered all of the rest of the solar equipment in one big delivery. And I'm still waiting for, you know, for confirmation when that's going to be delivered. I'm hoping it's going to be delivered this week. But my plan was what I would have done is I would have assembled the battery as it is connected it up to the inverter, um, and uh, which is also a battery charger as well, and that inverter stroke battery charger would have charged the batteries from the mains at a much higher voltage and higher ampage as well. So it probably would have charged those batteries in a few hours. Uh, probably would have drawn, you know, five, maybe six or 7,000 watts from the, um, you know, my, my grid connection that I have here. But what that would have done is it would have charged the batteries all the way up to, I could have maybe done it to like 90%, then disassembled it all, put everything back in parallel, connected it back up to the bench power supply and let it sit, you know, <laughs> leveling out um, and just do that final, final bit with the bench power supply. So that is a quicker way to do it if you're doing this yourself. Um, I don't have a standalone high power battery charger, so that was my, like, my kind of plan B. And I was just waiting for everything to be delivered. But like I said, I came in this morning and the bench power supply had turned off. Everything seems to be charged and it all seems to be balanced. So uh, that's the, that's the, uh, the cells all balanced. Uh, the next job is going to be assembling the battery.